Mike Staley Podcast. FF episode 1148. Hello, I'm Mike Matthews, broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Today, we are going to hear from Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, John Deere the Engineer, plus the return of the much loved, fun, wonderful segment called Jarell Name, with a little bit of the Daily Haley thrown in, and even Mike's Daily Podcast. Possibly your emails. Possibly. If you'd like to email me, email me at Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. There you go. Hey, I just want to say that I think I don't want to go to a place to drink that charges a lot of money for wine. It's a little she she hole that I don't have the time for. I was singing to you primarily about a place. Mike's Daily Podcast. That I found uh, in the east, well, the north, what do you call it? The something bay Mike's of the Bay Area. Daily Oh, Benicia. Podcast. Benicia and other places yeah. around the bay, they've got these little winery places that popped up. And, you know, you can sit there and drink your wine. But it's so expensive. You're paying a, for a glass of wine what you could pay for a bottle of wine or several bottles of wine. It's ridiculous. I'm not into it. That's why I will be single forever. There was an interesting show. It's called To the Best of Our Knowledge. I think a lot of NPR stations carry it. And they were talking to a guy who's come out with a movie called... I think it's called like How, How to Not Talk Gay or talking gay or something like that and he he is gay and he has he discusses the speech patterns that he has discovered will make most people go oh that person must be gay and he also discusses an interesting thing about disney movies how a lot of the villains can be perceived as they speak with this speech pattern most of the villains in Disney movies, which is a little upsetting when you think about it. But like Vincent Price's style of, well, look at, at Vincent Price. I can't really do it. Just listen to Thriller by Michael Jackson. He's at the end of that. But look, he just walked in. Hello, I think it's Shelly. It's too hard to get Chef Supervisor. Yes. I'm not a Disney villain. That's good. What's a Disney villain? A villain that appears in a Disney movie of some kind. Like like the, the mean lion tiger in Jungle Book had kind of... There are other examples. I can't think of any right now. Because you put me on the spot. Mike Matthews, going to wine bars are fun. Uh-huh. I like to buy tapas. Tapas. Yeah, tapas. I wonder if there's a Topless Tapas bar. Welcome to Topless Tapas. That was funny to no one but me. I was thinking back to Alabama when I lived there seven years ago. And what I just, I remember from Alabama was that there were a bunch of McMansions. You can buy some huge house for the amount of money. The little girls just walked in. Oh my, it's Floyd the Floorman! And this is John Deere, the engineer. We live in the Bay Area. Yes. Do you live in a McMansion in the Bay Area? We live in a Mc hole. Oh, that's not. Mike, it's really small where we live. Yeah, Mike, it's like the size of a shoebox. Oh. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, that's how it is in the Bay Area. Everybody. Ah, so small the houses are. But in Alabama, they were huge. And my ex-wife and I, we knew this, this couple that moved three times in the two years that we were there because they kept finding a better house and they would just move into a new house. They, were, they lived in... So in the time we knew them, they, they had three houses. They, they, had, they were living in three separate houses. I remember the foyer of the houses were huge you'd walk in it was huge just i remember one had like a pool table right off to the side marble floors huge backyards 
Then they, that was the first house. The second house they moved into, a huge foyer, had this huge kitchen that, but this big room where the kitchen and the living room sort of, the kitchen was as big as the living room and the living room was huge too. But they didn't really have a backyard that was fenced. They had a, uh, a, like a, like a big, there was a big lake and in Alabama when they've got a, well, it wasn't a huge lake. It was like a big pond is what I meant to say. Not as smaller than a lake, bigger than a pond. That's what it was. And in all those ponds, they like to put these fountains that you know, shoot water really high up in the air. And that helps move the water so that you don't get mosquitoes and that kind of thing. And it scares the ducks. Because ducks suck. No, they're wonderful. I love ducks. I'd have a duck sound effect, but today we're going sans sound effect. That was a little French for you today. But they then they moved into a third house, and, and it was weird because it was a two-story house, and everything, the living room and everything, was like upstairs. You had to go upstairs for that, and it wasn't on a it wasn't a triplex. It was just like they said we'll just build everything up. So houses aren't they wonderful? Do you ever watch HGTV's House Hunters? I was addicted to that for a while. It used to be uh, Quan, Julie Quan or somebody was the host that would be on every show and she'd come out all smiling and she'd set it up. But then she like left the show. She set up the show. The show runs now with like this narrator that you don't see. A faceless narrator. And then they go and they look for different houses and it, they usually want something with stainless steel in the kitchen. And granite countertops. And there are several other things that you see every homeowner wants. But what I was going to tell you is we have Jarell DeMay right now. And Mike's Daily Podcast.com is a wonderful place to catch all the past Jarell DeMays and Daily Haley's and interviews and other th- Oh, and the podcast picture. And here's today's podcast picture. And today's podcast picture is over in San Francisco. At the Exploratorium, which moved a couple years back onto the pier. It used to be over by the Palace of Fine Arts, closer to the Golden Gate Bridge. Now it's along the Embarcadero. And there's this awesome sculpture. I think it has to do with uh, the. It's some kind of construction of an amino acid or something. And it's this beautiful lit up display. And you can see that in Coit Tower in the background. It was a neat moment. Uh, I forget why I went to San Francisco. I think I just wanted to go. It's kind of neat when you're in Podcaster Valley. You can just hop on BART and go there. And I walked around. It's a fun excursion. Although I noticed they closed my coffee bean and tea leaf that I used to go to near Powell and Market. So that's sad. But who cares? That place is overpriced too. Much like the wine bars. See that picture now at mikesdailypodcast.com. And you can help out the show through the Amazon link. Click on that. Buy whatever it is you're going to buy. It helps us out tremendously. Thank you for doing that. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, go through that first. And then there's also the PayPal if you'd like to donate to the show and help us out that way. That's awesome. And finally, there is the... uh, Oh, and if you do that, you get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. You can email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. And now... It's time for Jerelname. Jerelname. Welcome to my segment. It's called Jerelname. No, wait, it's not my segment. It's Jerel's segment. Well, technically, it's actually Mike's segment since he came up with the name, and I'm just a guest. We'll also play the Daily Haley because Haley's here. Are you a cop? The Daily Haley. The almost Daily Haley. I need to stand in between you two so I can get the best out of this because I'm using a handheld microphone situation. Ready? Oh, oh man, they're not singing with me. Oh, I thought you were going to turn into a barbershop quartet. There's three of us. Do I look like a cop? <laughs> Do- Actually, if okay. there's anyone who looks like a cop, it's me. No, no. My neighbor's a cop and you look like a cop. But I have I have the tactical pants. He's tall and white and bald. <laughs> he was not referring to me. Well, a barbershop quartet can be three people, can't it? <laughs> <laughs> but 
Well, the question is, do any of us sing Think besides about him? what you just said. Well, the question is, is do we even sing? Okay, so I guess, uh, so what's the latest in Pokemon Go? Oh, yeah. Hey, Jarrell, tell me a little bit about Pokemon Go. What's going on with it? Is it still around? You know, to be honest, if they had to come up with a theme for that song, I would use E40, Tell Me When to Go. How does that one go? Well, you gotta let me know. Should I stay or should I go? No, there. but it's the reggae version oh. because it's E40. So it's like, ding, ding, ding. No, that's UB40, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Explain E40 to us. They make beer. How about you just YouTube it? Uh <laughs> You'll get right. better understanding that way. But as far as Pokemon Go, I would advise this. Stay off of private property. Have a curfew for yourself. That means don't be going around in the middle of the freaking night doing this stuff. Fremont has a curfew for people. Go to sleep. I was actually out with friends who were playing Pokemon Go uh, at midnight. Look, there's Mike Russell. Uh, is that good or bad? No, oh, he didn't want to be on the show. All right. You were playing Pokemon at midnight? I wasn't playing it. I was just with people that were playing it. Oh. So you mean you so you mean that you don't go around with your head down glued to your screen and then you're crossing the street and you almost get hit by a car? No, I've done that. <laughs> oh, that's scary. Hey, did you do pot with your friends? <laughs> no, the only time I've time I've done pot was with my brother. No way! Your older brother? That's what he does. Your old Is this the same older brother that taught you all about music? Because you have this vast knowledge of music, Haley. I guess so. He started me off. But this is Jarrell's show. Jarrell, Jarrell's show. Let's tell us more. About Let's talk about Pokemon Go. Okay. Just <laughs> go w responsibly. <laughs> You you are acting so policeman like right now with your. That's what I've been trying to tell you that I'm the biggest cop out of all of us here, even though I ain't got a badge. <laughs> Do you like how I stole one of the mic muffs and put it on top of the? Is this what it's called a mic muff? It's yeah. technically a pop filter, and you did not steal it. You're borrowing it. I'm borrowing. It. I took it from a mic. I'm putting it right back, Salem. They don't care. They don't even know what we're doing anyway. Salem Media. Oh, their general manager just walked by and saw me doing it. See? <laughs> you got cursed. I should get back to my job. Well, Jarrell, in other words, what you're saying is there's a Pokemon Go I'm desktop. Get back to my job. Okay, bye, Haley. Bye, there goes Haley. And there goes the door slamming. Well, no, it's right, There it goes. That's such a quiet door. Yes, it is. Tell us more about the desktop version of Pokemon Go. Well, it's in production right now. They really should have started with that one first. Or was their goal ultimately to get people to get off their lazy butts and actually go outside? See, so how am I supposed to carry that big desktop computer with the tower and walk around looking for Pokemon to kill? You're not. And you don't kill it. You catch it. So I mentioned on my podcast today, we're recording this on Monday, that, or no, it was yesterday, something, some, somewhere, let's go back in time. Well, first of all, we are in... Pleasant and Fremont Cafe anyway, which could be anywhere in the universe in the space-time continuum. So what does it matter at this point? I know we're being a little silly, but today, to, on Monday, all right, Sunday show, I did one on Sunday, Jarrell. I mentioned how I went to Benicia. Have you been to Benicia? Did you know we have a town called Benicia that's like in the north part of the bay? You're talking to an individual who is an introvert. It's next to Vallejo, if that makes any sense. So I was there. A walking Basil, the boxer, your friend and confidant. And there was a guy, we were on a pier. There's like a little pier that goes down to the bay. And there's people playing Pokemon Go. And I go, uh, you can catch Pokemon out here on the pier? And the guy says, yeah, this is like one of the only places to get the special water Pokemon. Oh, it makes sense, especially if they have cell sites out there. That's one thing for sure. You better have a good set of data bandwidth. Otherwise, you're screwed. That's what um, Xfinity now has an ad on the radio, uh, one of the stations I work at, which is talking all about their hotspots because they're saying, hey, if you play Pokemon Go, you should use the hotspots. Is it hot? Uh, I, it is, and it's too hot in here. Well, there goes Lana. Next time we do this, we shouldn't be right by where everybody walks in and out. Although it is kind of fun. We can just sort of grab people if they would like to be on the show. 
That's assuming they don't freak out. Oh, you were going to talk about the anime, the hot hot women anime. What? The the the, the, the who are, who is the most beautiful anime women in, in the universe that you uh, are cognizant of? In my own particular eyes, vision slash. In oh. your opinion, yes, Jarell Name opinion. It would have to be Belle Dandy from Oh My Goddess. She's got elegance, but she also has class and attraction of her appearance as well. Ooh, I'll have to Google that. You should. It's a nice anime, too. Has any women tried to cosplay her? Because th- would they be able to capture her elegance? I would think so. The biggest thing, of course, is cosplay is really just for fun. This is not a means to imitate the character, even though you could role-play the character yourself. But remember, it's all in good fun. And it's, so folks have to understand that, is don't get so obsessed in the character that you forget to understand what the entire essence of this particular culture is, and that's to have fun. That's right. That's what it's all about, having fun. Wow. Our general manager just walked in with a whole box of chips. What is going on? Nice. Hey, you know, the place over here actually feeds us snacks, and that's a good thing because, you know, if you wait five hours straight, you might overeat. So having some snacks and having your company provide snacks, that's actually a good thing. Have you ever gotten hypoglyragic? No. Your birthday's in three days! Yeah, something like that. Oh, my God! Uh, It's just a birthday. It's on, like, Wednesday or something. We got to do Tuesday. Wait. Today is Monday. It's one Wednesday. Thursday. How are you? What we we got to do? Last year we went to Dave and Buster's. We should do something this year. I'd rather just sleep. <laughs> how how did that go last year? You stayed out really late that time. That was only because to make sure that the alcohol was completely purged out of my system, so I don't get arrested. I know we we did. I had a huge beer at the Dave and Buster's, and then I had to get home because I had to be back here at five. Yeah, I just had a naughty redhead, but I just wanted to wait about an hour and a half just so, it wasn't a shot glass, but just so it makes sure it's purged. Because, yeah, if I get pulled over, I'm done. Wait, what's a naughty redhead? I don't even know. I, sounds like fun. Well, you, that's right, because it was a drink, Kevin ordered that. I haven't had a dendum with Kevin on the show in a while, so. Well, Jarell Name, thanks for telling me all about, what's the name of that character again? Bell Dandy. Bell Dandy. Okay, I'll look that up. Here, let me spell it for you. B-E-L-L-D-A-N, as in Nancy, D-Y. She's got it. She wears a ponytail, and her hair is roughly brown, and she wears one of the most gorgeous outfits ever. She's pretty much a goddess, but still, it's, it's anime, so at that point, you can kind of use a little bit more of your imagination. But if I had to comment on one of the sexiest anime characters, i got to think about this one. <laughs> I'd say one of them would be Aki Nijo from Makin Ki. Now, if you're into more etchy stuff, which etchy refers to because it's a semi-perverted anime or just comical events that are related to uh, the the uh, body parts showing, such as an upskirt shot or just bouncing boobs, then uh, Makin Ki is your show. What? <laughs> Behave yourself. Wow. So I learned a lot just then. You dropped a whole bunch of knowledge on me. I'll have to listen to this over and over again to try and process it all. Oh, yeah. yeah but if I had to choose between the two, either Bell Dandy or Aki, yeah, I'd have to choose Aki. Because, yeah, that's, I'm, I am a disciplined perv. <laughs> well, Jarrell, that sounds like a fun birthday gift to get you is something like that. But, well, if you have a question for Jarrell... And Jarell Name, our segment that Jarell does, you can uh, email me. Oh my God! Mail, 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 mail. Email for me now at your calm and not so calm mess. Mike Staley Podcast at gmail.com. And we'll, we'll read questions to Jarell and he can answer them right here on the podcast for you. I'd say that would be cool. I was talking on the podcast today about about how you're one of the only people that listens to the podcast. Come on, folks. Show some support out there. This is good... This is good old school comedy that you just don't find other anywhere else. It's old school, like uh, who's on first? I don't know, third base, like uh, Abbott and Costello, that kind of thing. Or Bob Hope. Yeah, and your pitcher is tomorrow, so don't forget. What? What picture? Tomorrow. Don't, don't forget. 
<laughs> you went into Abbott and Costello. I thought you were talking about we were taking pictures here at the station. Oh, boy. Jarrell, thanks for being on the show. Always glad to do it. Hope, hope to come back next time and have some questions. Yes, have questions for Jarrell. That'd be awesome. Woo! Woo! Yeah, that was the best Jarrell in the